there's something about being in the quiet and I really do enjoy quiet time and quiet space and I thought that you know maybe with you guys watching me preparing my produce and all that stuff for the week that we could have a little bit of a chat how does that sound I mean if you don't like a girl you know what you can do but let's have a little chat I have been feeling some sense of normalcy in the last couple of weeks. I made a big decision for me where I chose to fight for myself and I chose to stand up for myself in moments where it was really, really difficult. Um, sometimes fighting for yourself and standing up for yourself might mean losing people, might mean walking away from certain spaces that just don't benefit you. And for somebody who is like me, who has a really big struggle with losing people that I care about or being in a negative space with people that I care about, fighting for myself and standing up for myself is often something that I really, really struggle to do because if it comes at the risk of losing the ones that I care about, I would rather not and sometimes it comes at my own expense. So I decided to go the hard route this time. I decided to fight for myself. <laughs> and this is how it went. Not going to lie to you, the first couple of days was hard. The first couple of days was hard. I was sitting in my thoughts, thinking to myself, what is the other person thinking about what I said or what I did? What is the other person sitting there wondering about how I've just done something that I typically normally wouldn't do? As a people pleaser, it's really very difficult. Recovering people pleaser here. It's really very difficult to be in spaces where you have to make a stand or fight for yourself. And I realized that if I don't fight for myself, who's going to fight for me? If I'm going to sit and constantly fight for others or fight for the ones that I care about, who's going to fight for me? And... That is one of the things that made me make the decision that I chose to make with various people in my life. And I was at that point where I'm just like, I'm going to stand up for myself. I'm going to fight for myself. If you're not going to fight for me, if you're not going to fight for the space that we have built for each other and around each other, that in itself, in and of itself says so much. That is the message that I need to see. And I've been avoiding seeing it because that message then comes at the realization that maybe certain people are not who you think that they are. And I realized a lot of the time I get put in spaces where someone will treat me negatively or treat me badly and then blame me for mistreating for them mistreating me like it's the craziest thing i can't even make a sense of it right they'll treat me badly and then come around and then blame me for them treating me badly and i realize that with a lot of the people that i love and i care about i give them so much grace and i think it is really important to give someone you care about grace give them the space for them to know that you realize that they are human and that they make mistakes and at the end of the day nobody is perfect but in the same breath having those boundaries that say that listen i'm willing 
to talk this through. I'm willing to do this. But at the end of the day, a boxer is never going to be in a boxing ring alone and have a match play out, right? You both have to be in the boxing ring alone. And I've realized that with friends, with previous relationships, and I think it's just something that has happened to me now with the gift of hindsight, that a lot of the time I find myself in those spaces where I am fighting for people and for relationships with people that aren't fighting for me. And I just kind of got tired of it. And when I decided to take that stand with myself, it was really difficult in the first couple of days, especially in the last, say, month or so with various people in my life, four to be exact. When I took that stand, I was just like, I'm probably never going to speak to this person again, given what I've done, given all of the things. And then I thought to myself, if that's the case, then then those people are just never meant to be in my life. And they're not meant to be in my life for a long period. Sometimes it's just a season. And once I started accepting that and I started writing in my journal every single day, I realized the power that came in fighting for myself. And for some strange reason, waking up each morning, taste feels and seems a lot better than it did a couple of months ago, a month roughly to be exact, and it feels good. So message of the day, key thought for the day, fight for yourself. If no one's going to fight for you, then you should fight for yourself. 15, 20, 28, and then get less exposure and less calls. But you wouldn't want the first page either because that's too much exposure. So I paid six five hundred for the third mm. page. The first one cost seven mm-hmm. five hundred. Yep. The first page was kind of water. It was a type of beauty that I would call narco. In a swift motion, he pulled them down, re-gripped them like a knife, faced his mother, and began attacking her viciously. Ah! She fell backwards, and a shelf actually landed on top of her, pinning her to the ground. At which point, Brett seized the opportunity. He got up, grabbed a piece of nylon, he wrapped it around her neck, and he suffocated. As soon as she was dead, Brett pulled her out from under the shelf and dragged her to the side of the garage. Your mother! He put the shelf back up, and then he began loading his crossbow, because he knew Chris, his older brother, and his mother had called, <gasps> So he hid behind the door inside of the garage and just waited. And at some point, he heard Chris's car pull into the driveway. Chris walked into the house. He yelled for his mom. He yelled for Brett, but he didn't get a response. And eventually, Chris made his way to the open door leading into the garage. He stepped inside, and as soon as he did, Brett silently got up behind him, and he fired one shot directly into the back of his head, killing him instantly. Brett took Chris's body and piled it on top of his mother's, and as he was putting a tarp over top of them, he heard another car pulling into the driveway. Uh, it was his younger uh, brother, uh, uh, Now, at this point, Brett knows he's, he's killing his whole family. Job, and so he doesn't have time to load his crossbow. And so again, he just grabs one of the arrows, and he walks outside, and he sees AJ getting out of his car, and he runs up to him and he jabs the arrow into his brother's neck. So they're fighting in the driveway. Meanwhile, yeah, I, 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 evil, Lee, evil, evil. Now sleeping. Oh, he godless man. The sound of this commotion outside for him. And Brett turns and he sees Lee in the doorway and he runs off after him. Lee sees his brother running at him and just turns and runs into the house, but he only gets a few feet before Brett jumps on top of them, and then the two of them have this vicious fight where Brett is trying to stab him with the arrows, and they're basically both fighting for their lives, Ah! and at some point, after Lee suffered several very deep cuts, he manages to throw Brett off of him, and he runs outside to his brother AJ, who's now crawled all the way to the street, and in fact, AJ had managed to flag down a neighbor and got his neighbor to call the police. As police were arresting Brett, he kind of casually said, 
yeah, I should have taken AJ to the hospital. I could have saved him. And the other guys in the garage are dead. Crossbow to the head. It was me. In court, <laughs> Brett was extremely remorseful and pled guilty to all of his charges. The judge told Brett that he, he was killed of the fact three that he was of his family members of his heinous crimes, and that in many ways he was a victim too, a victim of this huge web of lies. <laughs> The reason of me switching on this thing, I, I wanted to just have a little chit chat with you guys like, hey, you know, welcome to this week's vlog. You guys could have seen over the past couple of days, I've been cooking and doing things. But then I switched it on right in the middle of Mr. Ballin. And I don't know if you guys, you guys know I'm a very big true crime lover, right? And so I watch a lot of true crime stuff and all of that. But I also love stories like strange, dark, mysterious things, paranormal things, whatever, whatever. So there's a character here. His name is, is there's a character. There's a channel here uh, called Mr. Ballin. M, Mr. B-A-L-L-E-N. Mr. Ballin. It's got over 9 million subscribers. This guy is the most fantastic storyteller. And he does stories about you know some of them are true stories some of them are um paranormal ghost stories what 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 this one is uh stories that sound 100 percent fake but that sound stories that sound fake but are 100 percent real ah, ah, this last one <laughs> mr poland hi <laughs> Woo! This guy's name is actually John Allen, but the name of his channel, actually his company, like he's big. He's big. It's not just his YouTube channel. He's got a foundation. He's got a book coming out. He's a, he's a big, he's a big creator. And I'm just, wait, see, after this particular story, I need a drink. <laughs> And I've told myself that I'm not going to drink during the week, okay? No. I don't even know how to tell the story. Maybe I'll leave the part in where you hear me reacting to it. Hopefully you'll hear John's voice because... Oh, wale na. This is Mr. Bolin. <laughs> yeah, the only surviving that's Mr. Bolin. Lee, the brother who was attacked last, managed to run outside to <gasps> escape Brett. He said that his life was shattered that day and that he can barely go outside because of his extreme post-traumatic stress. Oh, so that's good. good, guys. If you found the secret in today's episode, let us know in the comments what it is. Never mind my crustiness, ne? Life happens, okay? I'm sitting in the house. Hey, I'm Kosho. As in life, you can never trust anybody, not even your own family members. After that story, I wanted to come on here. Oh, let's chat. Let's have, you know, let me check you guys in on what's been going on this week. I can't even talk. I, I need a moment. Hey, I can't believe that story is true. Ah! I'll be back later. Bye-bye. Eh? Thank you. 
they do. Officially, uh, I slept in a little bit this morning, but doesn't matter. It's fine. We're still going to work. I work until pretty late in the evenings. But I wanted to share with you a story. You may have seen. Oh, this is the moment where gents might need to leave the room. <laughs> it's fact, though. It's fact. This is the moment where the men might need to leave the room. Okay. Just, I'm just saying. You can hear me without the machine in the back. I don't know how I feel about these honey gold lemons. I don't know how I feel about them. Anyway, so ladies, take all the men out the room. If you cannot take the men out the room or the children out the room, then put in some earphones so you can hear what I'm saying or headphones so you can hear what I'm saying. But honestly, it's a normal part of life. It happens to the most of us. It's okay. Men have their own struggles and issues as well, where things grow on certain parts. <laughs> so you may have noticed that in the bathroom, I was refilling a small tub of Savlon antiseptic. Now, if you're somebody who already uses Savlon antiseptic or Dettol or any form of antiseptic, then maybe this chat you you might not you might already know or it might not be any use to you but if you don't and you were wondering why is she using savlon why is she putting it in her shower let me tell you girl so i'm somebody who struggles or used to because it's been dormant for quite a number of years but i used to struggle with botulin cysts google it i'll write it down here it is not a nice cyst okay and it appears down there okay and it appears in a very very specific area like on the labia girl 
okay so i used to struggle with them a lot until i i i had i think the, the three times um the first two times it kind of appeared and then it kind of drained itself out i don't know how it was it, if you know anything about cysts and if they appear not internally but if they appear maybe here or if you struggle with cysts you will know that they are hard sore inflamed pink and painful like you literally oh so for me moving even walking was a really serious serious problem so anyway i had it twice before the third time obviously twice and then they kind of just went away after a couple of days they just went away by themselves then i had it a third time and when i had it the third time i landed up in the hospital that's how painful it was that's how i couldn't walk nothing my sister actually took me to the hospital it was that bad my, my sister has this thing for wounds and scabs and cysts and things and she likes to investigate and check them out like pimples you know she really enjoys your dr pimple popper like watching things like that for me it's just like no and then for certain people it's like um it puts them to sleep it's like asmr right so my sister was here on that day and i was like girl you gotta take me to the hospital I cannot, I am not okay, I'm not doing grand. And uh, my sister took me to the hospital, got to the hospital, it was so bad that I had to be admitted into the hospital. It was at the hospital where I learned about how the Savlon part comes in, right? So imagine I sleep at the hospital for two days, I'm there, now they need to drain it because it's not draining itself out. So this big red pimple thing on my okay it's just there and it's just the size of a pea okay like like these garden peas but maybe even a little bit bigger than that and listen i'm having a gynecologist not my own personal gynecologist that i go to i'm having a gynecologist come up and have a look at me i'm meaning to spread it well you know what i'm saying and i'm having this gynecologist come up to me like twice a day a man like man it's just like man that was a really tough time in my life <laughs> so there was a nurse who was looking after me and uh, the other patients in the ward that i was in i think there was like four beds or something and she was looking after me as well and she was like okay it's time for your i need to google it because i need to say it right is it a silt bath if there are any doctors or nurses here or sips, sits sits i think yes i had to do a sits bath okay s i t z a sits bath and in that sits bath i had to do it like tw three times a day and in that sits bath um they put water up to sort of like the waist where i would have to squat right in the bath and they put a bunch of savlon in there and i remember asking the nurse like what's the point of the savlon like what what happens and then she said that look the savlon is an antiseptic so it's going to clear out the bacteria there and whatever and it keeps that area clean and i'm like oh well that's interesting is this a root Oh, it fell. Okay. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And she says, yeah. So even when you're at home, you don't have to do it every day, but every couple of days, two, three days, just when you're washing that area or an area common with like hair, you know, uh, pits uh, where you get things like boils and cysts and all of that. It's nice every couple of days just to um, put on your washcloth or whatever you wash down there with on your washcloth. You just put a little bit of the savlon and you do your thing and you do your thing wherever there's hair because it'll help keep that area clean and all of that. i was like girl and she's like yeah yeah so make it a part of your routine antiseptic make it a part of your routine if you're somebody who takes baths even in your bathtub water whatever just a little bit not mixed with bath um 
salts or bath whatever no like just do a separate bath with just water and then just have a sit sit just have a sit do you know what i mean just have a sit and trust if you ever had issues with cysts or boils or whatever that happened to me over eight years ago and i've never had problems with cysts since so and i said i didn't tell you now you know now i can get to work and get back to regular programming. <laughs> mm.